Welcome recruit, it's time for you to begin your first lesson by starting off with the basics. While these ideas may seem simple, they're fundamental enough that we should quickly go over them before tackling more complex topics. We'll begin by discussing the very basics of working with numbers in Python. This should be pretty straightforward. To start off, numbers in Python have two main forms. It's either integers, those are whole numbers such as 1, 2, 3, 100, 200, etc. Or floating point numbers. Those are numbers with decimal points, such as 4.3, 5.6, you get the idea. Python can perform basic math operations easily. Let's begin your training by opening up a Jupyter Notebook and discussing these ideas further. As we just mentioned, there are two main types of numbers. That is integers. Remember, those are whole numbers. So if I have 100 or 10 or 1, those are all integers. And you can easily check the type of an object using the type function. TYPE, open and close parentheses, pass in the object you want to check. In this case, I'll pass in 100. Then we run shift enter, and I can say I have INT indicating an integer type. Let's try passing in 10.2. That's a floating point number, so we get back the type float. Something to notice though is if I pass in type 100.0, that's also a floating point number. And also notice that if I type in 100 dot, I don't actually need to indicate a zero there for Python to recognize that this is a floating point number. So 100.0 and 100 point or 100 dot, those are both floating point numbers. Integers can't have any decimal points. Now, as you may have expected, Python can perform basic arithmetic quite easily. There's addition, which you can easily do with just a plus sign, one plus one, run shift enter, and you get back the result too. You can do subtraction, so 100 minus 1 gets you 99, that's just a dash. Multiplication is with an asterisk, so you say 2, asterisk 2, that's multiplication. Division is with a simple forward slash, 3 divided by 2, that's 1.5. Note here that division always returns floats. So even when we say 1 divided by 1, that is equal to 1, if you ever perform division in Python, that's going to return back a float, 1.0. If you want to do powers or exponents, that's two asterisks in a row. Two asterisks asterisks, three is two to the power of three. And you actually don't need the spacing there. It's up to you stylistically how you can perform that. And if you wanted to, you could also do things like square roots. So you could do four asterisks to the power of one half. Mathematically, that's actually the same thing as taking the square root of four. Now we'll discuss more math operations later on. In fact, Python actually has an entire math library for more complex features of mathematics. Now that we understand the basics of arithmetic, let's finally discuss order of operations. If you ever need to indicate order of operations, you can use parentheses as I've done here. So let's dive into this example a little further. Imagine I had one plus two times 1000 plus one. Well, what do you expect the result to be? In this case, it's going to be 2002 because the multiplication is going to happen first due to order of operations, and then we'll add in one on both ends. But let's imagine you wanted one plus two to happen first, and then 1000 plus one to happen, and then you wanted those two results to be multiplied. Well, you can use parentheses to indicate order of operations. One plus two multiplied by 1000 plus one. And now when I run this, you can see the result is 3003, or three times 1001. Let's now discuss variable assignments. You can assign variable names in order to keep track of objects in either your script or your notebook or whatever development environment you're using. We'll start off with a simple example. We'll say A is equal to two. And now I've assigned two to the variable A. So if I check the type of A, it brings back an integer since a is two. And then I can do something like a plus three. And if I run that, I get back five because two plus three is five. I can also do another assignment such as b is equal to three and then interact with variables such as a plus b. Important to note here is that I can do a reassignment. So I can say a is equal to 100. And now if I say, just ask for a returned back, it's no longer two, but now it's 100. And if I say a plus b now, I get back 103. 
Now you can also reassign with the same variable. So what does this actually look like? If I take a look at A, remember that A is 100, I can do a reassignment referencing the same variable. So now I'm going to indicate that A is equal to A plus A. Since A is currently 100, I should expect the result of A to be reassigned to 200. Meaning if I run this and I ask for A back, it is now 200. If I run this cell more than one time, so notice my in operator, it says number 25. If I were to run this again, so now it's 27, and then ask for A, A is now 400 because it's 200 plus 200. And every time you run this, you're gonna keep adding onto that reassignment. So in notebook settings, you want to be careful and try to organize your code that cells should be run in order from top down. If you're running a .py script, you don't have to worry about this because you'll basically be running your entire script every time you run your .py script at your command line. Finally, let's work through a simple example of variable assignments. We'll start off by creating a message. And let's say our message is the sequence 111 or the number 111. Then we'll create another variable called hash code. And notice here what's happening with the word hash. Hash is being highlighted green. If you ever see a variable name being highlighted, that indicates that it's actually a special keyword that's built into Python. So you'll probably want to choose a different name. So if you start doing things like list or str, notice how they're being specially highlighted. That means those are already pre-built in keywords in Python and you should avoid reassigning those. So instead of just saying hash, I'm going to say underscore code. And this use of underscore to separate words in your variable names is known as snake casing or snake case. There's also camel case where you can do something like hash and then the next word has a capital letter. For variable names in Python, try to use snake casing, that is separating the words out with underscores. Later on, when we learn about more complex topics, such as object-oriented programming, we'll see that there's a given convention for naming and camel casing and snake casing have their particular moments. Right now for variable names, try to keep it with a snake case, that is the use of those underscores to separate words. So I will say my hash code is one, two, three, four, five. And let's say I want to create a secret message for another agent out in the field to discover. Well, I will say secret message is going to be equal to my message multiplied by my hash code. And then I can send my secret message and I can use tab to autocomplete this. I can send that secret message out to the agent and if they know the hash code to get back the real message, we can say real message is the secret message, notice my tab auto completion, divided by the hash code that they knew. And then they can see that the real message was, like we said, one one. Now again, notice that whenever you perform division, your number gets converted to a floating point number. Okay, that was actually a very basic example of something called encryption, where you try to encrypt an original message using some sort of secret key. Later on, we'll learn about much better ways of doing this. This is just for a very simple example of variable assignment. Okay, excellent work, Recruit. It's time to move on to other basic Python data types.